when we get excited and things begin to ignite on the inside of us, we're going to hear no, right? We're going to hear that, you know, but it's not about that. It's about how we get through it, right? It's about what we do about it. And so we're talking about building your names list as we build your business and the different ways that this is actually working and intertwining in who you are and what your business looks like today. You know, we all start off with what? The names list. You know, Mackenzie just getting her business started. I was talking to her today and I said, I still haven't seen your names list. She's like, oh. you know, I'm like, girl, come on, get your names list. And she's like, but I don't know anybody here. I'm like, oh my gosh, you already sound like, you know, negative belly here. I'm just kidding. But we had to overcome that because the first thing that happens, you guys, hey, Dave, Kaylee, love you guys, um, is that we start thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know anyone, right? But I think the main important thing is understanding warmth and competence when you're building your names list. You know, when you're getting started, or maybe you're out of names at this point, and you're like, okay, what do I do now? You know, you're going to be living everyday life, and you're going to be running into people um, in your everyday life, and it's all about you. Gaining that, that uh, confidence through warmth and competence. And two things that will single-handedly crush your business is not mastering the skill of warmth and competence. And really, it's about who you are when no one's looking. Think about that. You know, I mean, I had somebody say, man, I, I saw this person and, you know, and they were walking down the road and they didn't know I was driving by and they had their dog and they, like, kicked it. And they could see, like, wow, that wasn't who I thought that person was. And all of a sudden, that, that perspective of that person totally shifted. So what happens is when we get in business and we start dealing with people, we get fascinated. Isn't that right? Jack of Alaska says we get fascinated. People, you know, it's all great until people get involved, you know. But we still have to have warmth and competence in leadership. And we have to have warmth and competence as we build our names list. You know, because people are going to want to partner with you. It's the truth. They don't want to partner necessarily with a company because you are the CEO of your company. So what kind of representation are you to your company that's going to help you really grow a names list? And, and you know, a names list is like kind of like... Um, fuel to a car, you're going to constantly be feeding your business new names because you're going to constantly need to be going off of that fuel that you're putting into your car, right? And so um, I came from a company that that's all I had to do. I had to get new names every single day. Like it was what I had to do. And so there wasn't an option. I didn't have, I had the mindset of it's not if I did it, it's that I got it done. It's like I didn't not go home until I had a certain amount of names. Well, that's a lot of pressure. So I believe that we can actually change that perspective too and really look at waking up every single day, Julie, and saying, who am I going to bless? Who am I going to get out there? Well, who am I listening to that needs what I have? Are you telling yourself that? Because that's a part of warmth and competence as you work and grow your names list in your business, right? And so and if you're new, it's just everybody you know is skin. Don't prejudge because it's the people who you think won't that will and the people that you think won't will that won't, right? And so you never know, but you have to be confident. You have to posture yourself with warmth and competence. And if somebody tells you no, you don't get in the bed, you don't fall down, you have started a business. And so you are determined to show up, to go up in your business and continue to create your names list. And that's uh, warmth and confidence is so very key to start off with because you can learn the skills. You can be a great salesperson, but if you don't have warmth and competence, you guys, you, you are literally building on quicksand. You are building your business on quicksand because it is not about how much you know. It is about how much you care about someone else. That is the number one most authentic thing people are looking for. Like, how do they really feel about me? So when you're leaders and you're building your team up, don't knock them down. You speak life over your team. You speak the warmth and the competence that you, you know, maybe you don't know it all, and that's okay. That's the, that's the problem with us. we got to get out of our own way and go, you know what, I may not know that, but that's a great question, Shanika. I'm going to find out for you. Because I know that I can find somebody with the right answer. And you know what? People believe that's real. It's about believability. It's about connecting with people. That warmth and that competence. And so, you know, that's really, really key in growing our names list. Is that the more we walk around posturing ourselves with confidence and warmth and believability, do you believe in your product? I believe in that pet OPC more today than ever. I know Jay, he's like the, the king of the OPC for the pets. 
And you know what's great about every person in this room? Is that we all have something to give each other, to inspire each other, that's been our testimony. Right? And we look around and we're like, oh my gosh, who, how can I get to know, you know, the people that are in front of me in this family that I can give their testimonies away? Tell me, what has this business done for you? I believe that as we grow and we become warm with each other, then we become more passionate about giving the stories away. I look, I'm so excited. I mean, I am so proud of Cindy because she, she was like starting on shaky ground. She's got all these kids and, you know, she's a domestic diva. You know, she stays home. You know, but yet she's determined that nothing's going to get in her way, but she's going to build her business. And she's been the top three on the call. And you know why? Because she's got more warmth and more confidence in her little toe, you know, than most people that I know. Does she have all the answers? No. She's like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what to say. I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry. We're going we're gonna to get through this together. And we're in the gymnasium. And we're building up the warmth and the confidence because we love people and we want to see them grow. And that's what you have to determine. First off, if it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about we. It's about we. And that names list is going to get more and more people, um, you know, wanting to do what you're doing. Literally. I had somebody just hit me up on Facebook and they're like, um, you know, hey, I want to start your business. I'm like, who are you? You know? I don't even know who they are. And I'm just looking through their profile. I have no idea who this person is. And I'm like, let me ask you why.
Okay, so when you posture yourself with that believability, that is something people want to jump on board with. They have no idea where you're going, but they'll fall you off a cliff. I, I literally, I have seen Cindy, she is so magnetic. I'm like, what are we doing? She's so excited. She's life-giving, looking for opportunity. You guys, try it. This week, your homework is to get around people and just try it, because guess what? It, I can't tell the, you this enough. You, if you don't try, you never know. Right? I mean, Quimby and I will do this when we like somewhere wherever. I'm like, oh my gosh, Quimby, they're amazing. You should go talk to them. She's like, okay. So I'm like, okay. You know, we have a word in the beauty business. And girl, you are beautiful. You know? We need to know you. You know? And, and, and we do it, but we don't worry about the result. We're not looking for the outcome. We're just looking to say, hey, you know what? You may think we're crazy, but we're not. But our job. Her job is to find the best out there, and I think I see something in you. Is it okay if I get your information and we sit down and we just have a talk? Because I believe you're going to just die when you see this. And you know what? I'm not saying it all right. I'm not all like, oh, hey. you know, I'm from Willis, a little country girl. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm who I am. Be who you are, because that is the best person that you you are designed to produce greatness, Katie. And when you jump up out of the inside of you and you believe with warmth and with confidence and believe it, people want to follow you. I love it when you're confident. And you know, when you can make other people, guess what? Your names list will grow and grow and grow. I mean, you will, you will look and you will start attracting the people instead of repelling the people. You know, that's so key. You know, you, get, you know what repels people? Fear. You can see it. Look at those. Because then they're not like, they're, they're looking at you, trying to fix the you up. You know, and you're like, but guess what? You're doing the same thing. You, we size people up as we sit with them, don't we? So you have to have yourself always positioning and posture yourself for looking for opportunity all the time. Right? Then building relationships. I mean, we hear this. When you're the brand that builds relationships, that brings results. We're the brand that's building relationships and bringing results. You want to add more names to your names list? You give yourself a goal. You give yourself a monthly goal. I'm going to build relationships with five people this month that I do not know. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to put myself on a challenge to be the warmth and confidence, to look for the opportunity, to grow my names list. You know, Stacy's going to talk about in the book, we give you the binder. We have a names list for the people that you want for the events, and we have names lists that you want to have for team building opportunity. You know, you, it's all right there. I, I, I'm just so excited because this book has been like amazing. And if you actually followed it and you actually did what it said, if, if you went to your work and your job and they said, you have to do this Monday through Friday, and that's how you get your paycheck, would you do it? Yes. So why don't we treat our business the same way? We have to truly decide that we are not going to miss opportunity because of fear or because of doubt or, you know, I don't know, I just don't feel like it today. Well, if you don't feel like going to work, you don't get paid. And so you should show up 100%, even if it is 10 to 12 hours a week, right? It's all about your perspective. It's all about looking for opportunity. It's all about being confident in why owe you, right? And I remember, man, I was so scared. I was scared. I mean, I remember Steph and I, boy, uh, we, we, were, we were cutting our teeth in, in network marketing. And I remember we, were, we would have to give each other little pep talks just to go, okay, you can do it, you can do it. And we were so scared. We were freaked out because we didn't believe in us. We didn't think we were going to say the right thing. You know, and people looked at us crazy because we were crazy. You know, but at the end of the day, the more that you do it, the better you get. The more that you show up, the more your business just starts growing. And I love it. Brad and Susan, I have to tell you, you guys are the most determined couple. And I just love you guys. I see it on the inside of you, and you're not letting anything hold you back. And now it's your time to jump out. Jump out. Who cares what people think, you guys? Who cares? Maybe they need you. Are you willing to step out of your own comfort zone to get to where you need to go? The next thing is dating. <laughs> Right? I mean, think about this. Are you, are you dating your business? Or are you married to your business? Right? I mean, think about it. If you're dating, then there's an the option to get out. I don't know. I'm going to try this for a year or two. And, you know, if it doesn't work, then I'm out. No, you have to decide. If this is something you're doing anyway, right? And then there are going to be people along the way. And Kelly and I were just talking about this. And if you 
were on the call last night, uh, you know, she was talking about she's been dating somebody in the business for a year. When you're talking to people, you know, you're like, hey, let's just date this for a minute. People will appreciate that. You know, and then what happens is, is as you date them, and she's say, she's like, we're going to date this girl for a while now, this lady, and she's been to events, and she's done this. I said, okay, it's been long enough. Why don't you do this? Just be real funny and go ask her to marry you. <laughs> like, okay, will you marry me now? Because you know enough, right? You know? And so, I mean, but just get around. Be light and easy with the people that you are coming in contact with. You know, sometimes it's just us making the decision, and the people will follow Right? People will follow. And now she's had so much success. She goes, I did it. I get to ask her to marry me. And now she's had all this success. And then leading people through people through people. Well, it started with, hey, she was on the names list. And then she just said, hey, let's date this thing a minute. So the lady's like, okay, there's no pressure. You know, it's okay. So then what happens? You close the deal. Listen, you know, it's okay. Some people do. Some people won't. It's all right. But you're, you're all about imparting life into someone else. And it always comes back to you. I promise. And in this business, it's not quantity. It's quality. It is quality. I mean, it is amazing that when you really look at someone and you can see their quality, be bold. Say, man, you, you are so amazing. And I would just do anything for you to sit and look at this opportunity because I look for people like you. You are an amazing business person see it on the inside of you. And they may not even know it. Somebody told me that. I was like, what? My own was scared. I don't even know. You know? But guess what? That's how our team is. We look at them and we see great things and we want to pull it out of them. We want to do great things. But we have to first believe. Right? And our names list will just start growing as our confidence starts really moving up. Every single level, you're going to see that your names list are going to go from the onesies and the twosies all the way up to the tendencies, right? They're gonna become more and more power hitters on your team because you change. I promise you, it will happen. So dating your business, and don't hurry the process. Don't hurry the process. Enjoy the journey. Again, I was talking to this girl the other day, and she's like, this business just isn't working. I'm like, oh my gosh, she said, well, okay, so let's meet. Let's uh, bring your binder, let's sit down and talk about you know, activity, and let me see what's going on. I'd love to help you figure out why this is not working. And so we met at the coffee shop, and so, you know, she brought her binder, and literally, y'all know how I talk about snow blindness, <laughs> how, like, nothing spilled out, you know, but then we wonder why it doesn't work, you know? And so we sat there, and she, said, she gave me the binder, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, how long have you been doing the binder? And she's like, um, well, I made it. I was like, well, that's the first step. And I said, well, how long have you actually been in the business? And she said, well, man, I think like 10 months. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Let's look. Uh, it was six weeks. She thought she'd been in the business 10 months. What? We think more about what we're doing than really the time frame that we've done. It. We think about this business more than we apply this business in our life. And so I looked at her and I said, girl, you know what? Are you quitting? She's like, uh, you know, and then she's like, I have? Oh my God, that's what the computer says. You know, and so the whole point is, is that you cannot hurry the process. This is a two to three year plan. This is a two to three year plan. And sometimes we don't get started when we get started. True? Sometimes we didn't get started until yesterday when we decided to leap off the fence of indecision, right, Josh? Right. Josh said, he was like, he was in the business a while, and he's like, all right, I think I'm ready to finally get this thing started. Well, that's the day you start your business. That's the day you can start looking and judging and seeing what's going on, but what are you really doing? You know, you have to take your steps of action, but the number one step is enjoying the journey. Enjoying the journey. And when you are looking for opportunity and you're enjoying, you're not hurrying the process, just like we talked about with dating. Kelly's gotten where she's gotten because she was patient with the people. They, get, they don't want pushy. They want, to, they want to partner with patience. They want to partner with someone who's going to help them, lift them up, build them, encourage them. Be their CEO, their chief encouraging officer. Just say, hey, I'm going to be your CEO. I'm going to be your chief encouraging officer. And when you get this, because I know you will. It's not if you, if you will. I know when you do, you're going to be as excited as I am about your growth and your business. And so, isn't that right? Don't we get excited when our people get
get it when the light bulbs go on? I know Tom was excited. Do you think common sense, you guys? I mean, this is a this is a this is pretty self-explanatory. Use common sense, right? You have to use common sense your business. If you think for one second that people are gonna partner with you and you run around and you act like Hitler in your business, they are not. They are gonna smile at you and they are going to appreciate your words of wisdom or whatever that you have and they are gonna turn around and they are never gonna call you back. Or you're gonna have a problem. Use common sense. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Understand, I remember Norma and I, we were driving down the road and she's like, Brittany, I just don't know about these people. And I was like, yeah, no, she goes, this business is totally different than I've ever, ever done before. And I'm like, Norma, you just have to be patient. You just have to love the people. They'll come around. And last but not least, a relationship that built, uh, that's built seals the deal. Okay, so we've talked about this, the warmth and the confidence. You're, it's kind of like a baking process. You're using warmth and confidence. You're looking for opportunity. You're using common sense. You're building your names with, with the idea in mind that, you know what, I, have, I, I was um, you know, writing down people that I know, and Josh, you came to my mind. Because, you know what, I really think that, I, I remember you saying your parents really taught you entrepreneurship. And you know what, I wrote you, I wrote you down because I was going to challenge you to really sort out the people in my life. And I put you there because I really admire you as a young person who really has a knack for business and a mindset that's been built on the inside. Would you take a look at this? I mean, it may not be for you, Josh, but you know what? I know one thing. Josh, you are the kind of person I'm looking for. Listen, you guys, say the same thing over. Let it come from the inside. That people make it, you know, they are drawn to you because you're authentic to them in every way. And so, um, you know, these, this, nameless pro or this nameless process you guys, it's fun. It should be fun. You should have like a scavenger hunt in your head. And I know Stacey's going to come up and talk about the binder part of, you know, how to really sort this out with your names list. But here's the thing. Remember, all these things matter. You cannot skip a step. You have to remember that in building your business, authenticity is the key. Consistency is the key. Warmth and competence is truly the key. And so you have to wrap it all up and honestly just become it. Step into it. Have fun with it. The worst thing that could happen is you not enjoy the journey of this business. Don't get to the two to three years and be miserable. Let your torch, you know how they run to, you know, um, in the Olympics and they have the torch light. They're running and they're running. They have to, they have to finish their race with the flame lit. Don't let the flame go out. Don't let it burn out because you let other people do that to you. You stay confident. You posture yourself for success. And believe me, it'll happen. Your life will change. Your business will change. And everything around you, your atmosphere, will change. Thank you. Thank you. 
So for people that have been around for a while, right, Dr. Ed and Norma and Quimby and Nick and, you know, Kelly and, and uh, John, it's really powerful, right, to have everything in one place. Mickey and Michael, I mean, you guys have been around, but you guys know that this is very, very powerful. But then taking that and then using the place that we have for 200 names. How many of you guys have 200 names on your names list? Raise your hand. Okay, if you do not yet have 200 names on your names list, get there. Because when you go through this names list jogger, you're going to see it will help. Because it has everything from, who do you know by the name of Susie? I mean, you know, it could be, we know Susie, right? <laughs> you know, who do you know that um, owns a towing service? Who do you know that's a ski instructor, a bank cashier? And you may not even know the name of that person, but maybe it's the cashier that you're regularly working with when you go to your bank. And you know, the lady with the brown hair at the bank, you know, and then maybe at some point when you're going in there, then you'll actually learn her name because you're going to be a conscious decision to make that happen. But get that names list up to 200 people. It's very important. And then from there, we're going to help you break that down. So I, again, I encourage you, I'm just going to zip through this tonight, but we encourage you to watch that Create Your Possibility list on Meet On. So how many of you guys understand how to use Meet On? Okay, so Meet On, if you don't know, is you go to meeton.com, and on the right hand side it says register or log in. It's free, so either you register or you, if you already have a login, log in. And then there's a search bar, and in the search bar, put Whited, W-H-I-T-E-D, W-H-I-T-E-D, and then it's going to pull up David and mine, all of the Meet Ons that we've done. And then from there, you scroll down, and it's on the second page. It's called Creating Your Possibility List. Creating Your Possibility List. Very important that you watch that. It's only 30 minutes, but it is very helpful uh, for this process. But on here, I'm just going to show you real quick, just breeze through something that we talk about. So you have this names list of 200 people, and you're like, where do I start now? So I've got 200 people. Who do I call first, right? And so we start this process where we talk about numbering your names list, and this has nothing to do with the value of a person. I want to make sure you guys all understand this. I'm not saying that this person is better than this person in any way whatsoever. All we're doing is numbering this person on how we feel that they would do in the business today. Does that make sense? It's how we feel based on what I know, how I feel that this person would do in the business today, okay? So when we're numbering, uh, we're doing it on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 is somebody, have you guys heard the Pam and Tony bowling story on, uh, on your Unfranchised Media app? If you haven't, I encourage you to listen to it. It's, Paul, it's Pam and Tony Bowling. Tony Bowling right here. Uh, when JR describes Tony Bowling, he describes him as somebody that is just, is, is just an example of peace and prosperity. And when you see Tony Bowling, I mean, he looks sharp when he's not dressed up. He looks sharp and sweats. You know, I mean, this guy just looks sharp. You know, he looks sharp, he carries a lot of posture, uh, he has a lot of peace, but he's also somebody that when you see him, you're like, whatever he's doing, that's what I want to do. Does that make sense? You know, you guys probably all, all know somebody like that. Would you guys agree? It may not be Tony Bowling, but you have somebody in mind that you're like, that person right there, when they say they're doing something, everybody around them says, I just want to jump on board with whatever that person is doing. Okay? So that would be a 10 on your names list when you're making it. You are a 5. This is very much a key to creating a names list. And a 1 is, have you guys all ever seen Christmas Vacation with Cousin Eddie? <laughs> I love it. If you haven't seen that movie, I recommend finding it on Netflix or something and watching that movie. It'll kind of give you a better visual of what a one would be. Nothing against Cousin Eddie, but he's not the most ambitious person in the world. You know? He's somebody that's like completely satisfied with where he is, and he's okay. Okay, Clark's giving him money for Christmas. He even says, here's my Christmas list. I threw a little something nice on there for you. Thanks for paying for it. You know? That's Cousin Eddie, okay? So when you're making your names list, as far as ambition level is concerned, that would be just kind of a visual for that, okay? So as you're looking at it, 1 to 10, you're a 5. We're going to talk to your 6s, your 7s, and your 8s. The reason we're not going to talk the first eight to your 10s is because the phone at that point, if you're going to call a 10, weighs 100 pounds. Because you are so scared to call that person because to you, it's very intimidating. So I would never expect you, when you're first starting your business, to call 10s. We're calling your 6s, your 7s, and your 8s. But I want to show you what happens when you go through this process. The natural process, after being with this company for 20 years and in, the, in this industry for 20 years, I've found that people will naturally, when they, when they start to talk to 
people. And I talked to their fives, their fours, their threes, and their twos. Why do you think that is? They're not scared of them. It's easier, right? Here's the problem with that process. We call it a natural progression. The problem with that process is those are the people that will typically beat you up the most. Because they have the least amount of ambition, and so they're like, why would I do anything else? You know? And I kind of have this, uh, this visual that, that's come to mind over the years after working with this is, um, we had a really good friend that actually used to fish for lobsters. And when he would fish for lobsters, he said when he caught his first lobster, and he put it in the bucket, they had to cover it with a grate because that lobster would be out right away. I mean, he would climb out of the bucket as soon as he got in the bucket. But as soon as they caught their second lobster, they never had to, had to cover it again. Do you know why? Exactly. As soon as the first one would, would start to get out, the second would pull it down. As soon as the second would try to get out, the first would pull it down. And that's really life. Would you guys agree? Sometimes when people around you, you know, let's, let, let me give you an example. Let's say that you are going to go on a, a diet and the friends around you know it. It's crazy how those people a lot of times will come offering you cookies and cake and all these tempting foods and you're like, what in the heck? Why are you doing this? I just told you I was on a diet. That's because if you lose weight, they no longer have an excuse for them not losing weight. Does that make sense? And that, that's how it is in business. If you are successful, they no longer can complain that they don't have any money because you gave them an opportunity to have money. Does that make sense? And so the ones that will beat you up the least, I tell you, after 20 years, I guarantee you this is the deal. The people that beat you up the least are the sixes, sevens, eight, nines, and tens. Because they look at this and think, this is a good business model. Model. They must have really thought that this was a good idea to bring it to me. And the power of that is, if you're talking to a six, a seven, and an eight, if they go to make a names list, what are they? A five. A five. Why do you see the power of this? So, okay, let's say Brad goes to make a names list, and he's a five. He goes to talk to Susie. They're not married in this example. He goes to talk to Susie about the business. Susie is a six on his names list. Okay? So, she decides that she wants to become an unfranchised owner. She makes a names list. What is she? A five, but she was a six on Brad's. Does that make sense? So then Susie goes to make a names list and she talks to Cindy. And Cindy is a six on Susie's names list. Cindy says, yes, I want to do this business. So Cindy goes to make a names list. What is she? A five. She would have been a seven on Brad's. Are you guys seeing this? And so then Cindy decides she's going to make a names list. She puts Stephanie on the names list. Stephanie's a six on her names list. So she goes to talk to Stephanie. Stephanie says, yes, this is like a great idea. She wants to now partner. She goes to make a names list. What is she? A five. Now she was a six on Cindy's. She would have been a seven on Susie's, and she was an eight on Brad's. You guys see that? And then, and I was going to take it one more level. But then Stephanie goes to make a names list, and let's say she's not married to Jason. Jason's on that names list. He's a six. Okay. So he decides, yes, I want to go ahead and do this thing. He's a five. Now, what was he on Stephanie's? What would he have been on Cindy's? What would he have been on Susie's? What would he have been on Brad's? Nine. Nine. So now we're talking to nines, but Brad not even having to call those nines because we're using somebody else's names. You guys see that? It is so hard. And so your first job is to get your names list of 200 names. Your second thing is to number that names list 1 to 10. Okay? And so, and then the third part of that is calling your sixes, your sevens, and your eights. And that's the progression that is so powerful. Now, in doing that, if you go to your um, go to your binder, your business binder, the next tab should be scripts. You guys see it in there? We have multiple scripts on there, but tonight we're only going to talk about a couple of scripts. We are dealing with a lot of personalities. Remember our personality night? Isn't that so much fun? I thought that was so beneficial. I'm thank you so much for making that happen, Randy, because I think of that often. You know, like when I'm working with different people, like I'm working with Jessica, I know she's an orange. And so like when I'm working with Jessica, I'm thinking, how are oranges motivated? What makes them excited? And so I'm really learning how to work better with an organization based on personalities. And so we understand that personalities are important. And so when I'm going through these scripts, I'm talking about two scripts tonight. The first is actually one that's written out that you actually would read through. And I recommend, now some of it you can tweak it to make it more in your verbiage, but these scripts were actually designed 
uh, in my organization of people that have made at least a million dollars a year in the company. And so I got together about six different people and we created these scripts. And so, uh, and we have found, and they've been tried, been tried and true, they've been around since 2008, I believe, 2008 or 2009, and they work very well. There's a reason for every word in this script, just so you guys know. It's not like, oh yeah, I can just get rid of that, I don't really like the way that this one flows. No. This is actually designed because it works, and using that is really important, okay? And so understanding that. So that's the first script. If you go all the way to the back of your scripts, so stay in the script section and go to the back of scripts, there's one that's called Lose the Script, um, and, it, and it goes along with a, um, a YouTube done by Jim Winkler. And maybe you guys have seen that. That was another homework assignment, okay? So if you haven't seen it, you go and watch that because this is very important as well. And it's using the same concepts as the script that is actually written out, but it gives bullet points. And so, again, again, using those same ideas but using bullet points, depending on your personality. Some people do really well with scripts. Others are going to do better with bullet points. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter. Whatever works best for you, you need to find one, though, and you're going to stick to that script. The reason why we use the scripts is because it's duplicatable. Because, again, duplication in this business will either make you or it will break you. Okay? You can be really great, but if you're not duplicatable, you'll never create residual income. The only way you create residual income is by people looking at what you're doing and saying, I can do what she just did, or I can do what he just did. Does that make sense? And so creating that duplication is such an important part. Simple tasks that can be repeated by a large group of people is how you create residual ongoing income. So we're going to do something really fun tonight. Okay, um, so make sure you don't leave because there's a homework assignment that's really important that you don't want to miss. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few minutes. You all should have your, these two scripts. If you have your binder, pull it out of your binder. These two, the first basic script and the second is lose the script. If you don't have a script, Sam has uh, some back at the back table. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick, quick workshop. We're going to work for about 20 minutes. And um, we're going to have you take your scripts, and you are going to get with the people in this room. Um, I don't know how many we can do. We're going to start with three. We're going to see if we can get through three different dialogues, where you are actually practicing, trying to make an appointment, either using the script or using the one that says lose the script, which is the bullet points. Um, and you're going to get with somebody else in this room, and you're going to try it three different times. Now, the person that you are actually working through this process with Ask some questions. Don't be just an easy sell. Does that make sense? Ask some questions. Make it work it out because if you're working it out in this room, it's much easier to work it out in this room with family than it is out there with cold process or people that could be potential business owners. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is we don't want to take a lot of time, but um, does everybody have a script? Raise your hand because you're going to be by yourself, so you're going to need a script. So if you're, if you're married, you're going to need your own script. Okay? Who needs scripts? Okay, Sam, can you help us out here and make sure everybody gets scripts? So we're gonna make sure everybody has a script. And don't have, don't be running out that back door. <laughs> don't be hiding us. No in the corners. You're both gonna need, yeah. Yep. And then you can decide from there which one you'd like to use. What was the question? No, we're gonna actually do uh, one on one. So two people together. So it would be like like Quimby and uh, Jason. Does that make sense? So it's going to be one on one, and you're going to move around and do this three times. Now, here's the key to this, so it doesn't get confusing. Here's the key. Yeah, here's some more scripts here. The key to this is that um, that I'm going to be telling you the time. You've got five minutes, or you've got four minutes, or you've got three minutes. And what you're going to do is one person's going to going to go. One decide. Uh, one person's going to go first, and then the other person is going to go with that same person. Does that make sense? So each person gets to try using the script, but you're only going to use one script. Whatever your personality likes, if it's reading it, or if it's using bullet points, you're only going to use one of them. Does that make sense? I just gave you both because I didn't know personality-wise which one you guys are going to be using. Okay? Now, don't take a lot of time trying to find somebody to go with. You just walk up to somebody and say, I'd like to do this with you. Okay? So we're going to give you five minutes on the first one. So 
it's, it's going to be life changing. I always say if you attend the International Convention or the World Conference, it puts your business forward six months. No doubt about it. No doubt about it by attending it. If you bring somebody else with you, even faster, you know, through the process. And so attending that is going to be extremely important. But here's something I want you to be aware of. Corporate team, they're speaking at this event. Vendors are speaking at this event. Doctors are speaking at this event. And so remember that um, we have what we call a university type situation where, you know, if you go to college, you might be uh, in education and then your, friends is, your friend is in psychology. That college houses a lot of different uh, degrees, right? Just because your friend is in psychology and you're in education doesn't mean that you're like, oh, I need to do psychology and education. Does that make sense? I want you to understand that when you attend a world conference, they're going to be, there's people that are heads of department that are talking about future metrics. They're going to be talking about creating websites for small businesses. They're going to be talking about motives. They're going to be talking about all of these different university type situations. Before you go, you need to be understanding the, the road that you are on. Does that make sense? If you are a MODIS person and that's the university that you're specializing in, then MODIS is your road. Don't get there and be like, oh, I think I'm going to do future metrics too. Does that make sense? That would be like going to college and getting an education degree and saying, but I want psychology too. Because what ends up happening is you end up wasting a lot of time through the process. You end up trying to be like a, um, a, uh, a dog that's chasing two rabbits. A dog that's chasing two rabbits is going to go hungry. Does that make sense? And so understand when you go there that you want to learn about, about everything. That's great, but don't change your focus when you get back and then try to do something different than you're currently doing. Okay? So make sure you're staying on track. The other thing I want you to make sure that you understand is the basic five weekly checklist and our daily checklist, this is how we build the business. Okay? This is how you build the business. Anything else that you're doing uh, that you're going to be learning at International Convention, if it's not on the weekly checklist, that is in addition to the weekly checklist, not instead of the weekly checklist. So I want you guys to make sure you understand vocabulary wise. I want you guys to say in addition to. In addition to. Not instead of. Not instead of. One more time. In addition to. In addition to. Not instead of. Not instead of. Okay. So this is your track for creating residual six-figure income. All those other things are all bonuses and things to enhance it, but not to take the place of it. Okay, so very important coming into that. Another thing is, I'm so excited about homework because this is going to be so much fun. So here's the homework. We're not going to be having Leadership Academy next week. So I think that's Feb uh, February the 6th. Is that right? Next Monday. Next Monday, February 6th, there is no Leadership Academy. Because uh, Tom and Brandy and David and I had to be there early at the International Con at the World Conference, um, there's not going to be an, um, a, a Leadership Academy, but there will be the following, which I believe is at the 13th. Yeah. The 13th, there will be a Leadership Academy. So we basically have a two-week period of time. So your homework is covering those time periods, just so you guys know, so it's a little bit extended on homework. But here's your homework. Uh, David and I put together a series on YouTube called How to Win Every Appointment. And uh, this has been very beneficial and helpful for our organization and, and for the people that we're working with. This is even breaks it down to when you're going to share a business plan and you're going into a restaurant and you're going to meet, you're going to meet somebody there, where do you sit in the restaurant? And which direction does your prospect face? Because if the prospect is facing the door and they're looking at you, but then they're watching everybody that's coming in, how many think gaps do you think that prospect has when you're showing the business plan? They're going to miss a lot of information because they're like, oh, I like that lady's shoes, and I'm like, I think I know that person, and you know, they're just, they can't help it. And so you actually are facing your prospect to the wall, so all they see is you and the wall. Does that make sense? So there's a lot of tips that we've learned over the last 20 years on how to get the best out of every appointment and how to create a win in every appointment. Whether somebody decides to do Market America or not, a win-win situation. This is a four-part series on YouTube. And each one is anywhere between 50 to 30 minutes long, so they're not very long. So four-part series. So between now and uh, February the 13th, you need to watch all four of those, and, and that's part of the homework assignment. It's going to be very beneficial, I promise, for your business. The next thing is on the Unfranchised Media, Unfranchised Media app, how many of you guys have heard the calcium audio by Dr. Mylan Moore? Yes. So Shelly has, Steph has, Emily has, and Dr. Ed has. Is it amazing? It is so good. If you've not yet heard it, you'll be, you'll be walking around thinking, you need calcium. You need some calcium. Oh my gosh, it's okay. <laughs> it is such a great audio. 
out, you know, the education in it is fabulous. In fact, we're looking at taking it and, and tearing it down just a little bit because at the end, he talks about um, how, as a franchise owner, how to sell it. But if he wouldn't have done that, it, it'd be perfect to send to somebody as a, as a prospect to listen to because as a potential customer because it's amazing. So we're working on that to make it shorter. But that's something we want you to listen to. It's like 17 minutes long, something like that. It's a great one. The next one is uh, Business Building principles, principles with Rising Field Leaders. This here is all people that are uh, millennials, that means between the ages of 18 and 36, that have been extremely successful in Market America. They're making at least a six-figure income, some of a multiple six-figure income in Market America, and there's multiple ones. I think there's like four of them on this audio. It is excellent. Vincent Chin is the first one. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, this is a great audio because we're gonna use this because one of our things that we're going to be doing over these next few weeks is using the skills that Brandy just taught you tonight. You're going to talk to five millennials that were not on your names list um, about this business. You're going to send them a four-minute video, and then you're also going to have them listen to this audio of people that have been in the business that have been very successful that are their age. Does that make sense? And so that's a great little challenge for you guys, and we're going to have a prize for people that meet that challenge. So that's a fun one. Um, and then the last one is Power of Audios. This was done by David at the last international convention in Greensboro on stage. It's very short, it's like 10 minutes, but it is really powerful. It talks about why we listen to audios and the power of audios. Very well done. So that's another audio you're going to be listening to. And then, if you are at World Conference, while at World Conference, you're going to call 10 people from your names list while at World Conference to set up appointments when you get back. Here's the key to calling from uh, Miami. You say, Katie, you're like, hey, you know, Jody, I don't have a lot of time. I'm actually in Miami, but I wanted to give you a quick call. I'm actually staying a business in the area, and I'm learning so much about it this weekend at this conference that I'm at, but I wanted to see if we could set time while I'm there, uh, while I'm here, that when I get back, that we can get together, and I'm just going to show you some information about what we're doing. Okay, you can word it however you want, but the beginning part is, I don't have much time, I'm in Miami. Does that make sense? Because imagine if you got from, a call from somebody and they were in another state and they were calling you saying, I need to set an appointment when I get back, you'd be like, what? Okay. You know, and you'd let them know, I don't have much time. Okay? So that's 10 calls from Miami. If you're not going to Miami, then you just make those calls here and setting up those appointments for the next week using the skills that you're learning on how to win every appointment and uh, showing the business plan. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on any of those? Okay. And then, uh, and then this will be on the on the uh, Facebook page, so you'll see it.